I'm Boudicca. Some people call me Bidig, others Bodicea, and I lived 2,000 years ago. Back then, Britain wasn't separated into countries, but today you'd call where I lived the east of England, in East Anglia, where I was with the rest of my tribe, the Iceni. I was the queen of the Iceni, and my husband, Prostagus, was the king. We had two daughters, and we lived happily and peacefully with the rest of our tribe. But every now and then, the Romans, who came from Rome in Italy, came by as Celts. And the Romans would call the Celts slaves. They said that they owned us. We had to do exactly as they told us to. In fact, they were quite the bullies. But we did live fairly peacefully without too much trouble from the Romans until one day, my husband, Prostacus, died, leaving my daughters and I on our own. And although we were very sad, we also felt lucky because he'd thought about us. And Prostacus had made sure that he left half of the Iceni's land to the Emperor Nero and the Romans and the other half to us. But half the land wasn't enough for the Romans. No, they wanted all of the land. And what did they do when I refused? <laughs> they tied up my daughters and they flogged us. I was furious, but I had to wait for my revenge. Meanwhile, our story leaves the Iceni's land for a little bit and goes to Mona or Anismon Anglesey as you'd say today. Mona was a very special place because it was the home of the Druids and they felt just like I did about these Romans and were willing to fight against them with all of their might. And this time <laughs> The Druids caused so much trouble for the Romans that the Rome decided to send a large army all the way from Camulodunum, their British capital city, to Mona to sort out the Druids once and for all. And now that thousands of soldiers have left Camulodunum, there weren't many people there to defend it. There was no guard in the city. So this was the perfect chance for me to get my revenge, to attack the Roman capital city and to start a revolution. And people agreed with me. I was joined by another Celtic tribe and another and another and another. We were the Celts. We were full of fire, hungry for Roman blood. All that we needed was a leader. <laughs> and yeah, I was chosen. I was given the most incredible chariot as the Celtic leader, with plenty of room on it for my daughters to stand by me. As three, three women, leading our people to battle. But before we went to fight, we Celts needed strength to go to war. And the way we'd do that was by worshipping the goddess Andraste. And once we'd worshipped Andraste, we needed to find out who would win the battle. And the way we'd do that was to hold a hair and let it go. Oh, hi, hair. Come on. If the hair went to the left, the Celt would win the battle. But if the hair went 
to the right, we Celts would lose. Is that right? You ready, hair? Huh? He's gone to the left. The Celts are going to win. Oh, thank you, hair. Thank you, Andraste. Come on. Off you go. Off we went to Camor or Dunham as Celts hungry for Roman blood. And we arrived in Camor or Dunham. <laughs> Smart city. And in the middle of a city, there was a grand temple. And in front of the temple stood a magnificent statue. It was a statue of Claudius. Claudius used to be the Roman emperor. He was Nero's uncle. He was the one that had told the Romans to come to Britain in the first place. And he was to be blamed for everything. With my daughter standing next to me, I watched with a smile as all the Roman city was destroyed. We smashed the building into tiny pieces and burned it all to the ground. Camulodunum was ablaze. There was only one thing left. Claudius here, a symbol of everyone that had tried to oppress and bully my people. A symbol of the cruelty shown to my daughters. A symbol of the disrespect shown to my husband's wishes. I smashed the statue of Claudius into tiny pieces and oh, it felt good. But on, on we went, destroying Camelodunum wasn't enough. Next, we needed to go to Londonium or London, as you'd say today. And whilst Londonium wasn't a capital city, it was still a very important centre of trade for the Romans. But before we go to battle, we needed to worship Andraste. Oh, hello, Hare. <laughs> Come on. Now, Hare, if I'm right, if you go to the left, we Celts will win. Hmm? So if the hair goes to the right, the Celts will lose the battle. Off you go, hair. He's gone to the left. The Celts are going to win. Oh, thank you, Hare. Thank you, Andraste. Come on, off you go, little one. Here we go to Londonium. <laughs> but do you know what happened this time? Before we Celts even reached Londonium, a messenger came for the Romans who lived there and told them that they needed to run away, hide, find a safe place, instead of staying to fight as Celts. <laughs> what can I say? Clearly, the Romans were too cowardly to face as Celts. And that's how bullies are, aren't they? When you stand up to them. Londonium was completely destroyed. Another victory for the Celts. Oh, we were so happy. It felt like we'd just won Strictly Come Dancing. And how did we celebrate? Well, by having a party, of course. <laughs> now, back in other Celtic times, we would party by drinking mead and there'd be a huge pig over an open fire, a, a bit like a hog roast. And there'd be plenty of dancing and singing and laughing for hours. 
and this was a special party. So it lasted an entire week. Yeah, a week of partying. <laughs> but looking back on things, perhaps having a party for an entire week when we were still in the middle of a war might have been a little bit careless because that week gave the Romans time. Time to think and to plan and to conspire about how they were going to get their revenge. It gave the Romans enough time to send a messenger up to the large army in Mona. The messenger explained to the large army that Camelodunum and Londonium had both been destroyed. They had to return immediately to the rest of their people. However, this wasn't before the Romans had killed most of the Druids living on Mona. This was a victory for the Romans. We could almost feel the Roman army coming towards us, but I wasn't too worried. No, because by now, for every single Roman soldier, there were six Celtic warriors. Six Celts against every single Roman? How on earth were they going to beat us? Oh. Hello, eh? Now, if the hair goes to the left, the Celts will win the battle. That's right. But if the hair goes to the right, the Celts will lose. Are you ready, hair? He's gone to the right. Pardon? Good luck! Huh. Thanks, huh? No! No, 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 look. There are six Celts for every single Roman. And we Celts, we're fighting for our home, for our country. I'm sure we'll beat them. Off we go to war. I stood in front of the thousands of Celtic warriors and I was so proud of them. On the other side of the field, the Romans were waiting for us. And leading the Romans was a soldier called Suetonius. Ah, oh, those Romans, they were a sly bunch, you know. They spend a great amount of time thinking about tactics and conspiring and planning. And this battle was different to Camelodunum and Londonium. The hare was right. The battle was lost. And the Romans had won. There was only one thing left for me to do. Run away. Yeah. Escape. But... I don't want you to think that I ran away because I was scared. No. I ran away because I was the one that the Romans really wanted. I was the leader of the Iceni, the leader of the Celts, the leader of the revolution, capturing me and making an example out of me, torturing me, taking me to Rome. Who would have given the Romans a great amount of satisfaction? I wasn't prepared to do that. No. I did have 
a plan. One last victory to take poison and kill myself to stop those Romans from killing me. And that was the end of my story. Still, 2,000 years later, people still remember my name and they tell my story and they share my history. And if you ever get the chance to visit Cardiff City Hall or walk along the River Thames in London, in both of those places, you'll find a great big statue of me. And perhaps then you can tell people about me to make sure that you'll still remember me. Boudicca!